Well, welcome everybody to our final week on our Connect Group series on the glory. I really hope you've been enjoying your discussions and the things that we've been talking about over the last couple of weeks. And uh, we have Pastor Neil with us today um, to look at another aspect of God's glory. Uh, we're going to be talking about the manifest presence of God's glory and also being people who are glory carriers. Yeah. Uh, so why don't we start with that idea of kind of God's manifest presence of his glory? Yeah, well, uh, Sam, I think, I think another way of actually talking about God's glory is to talk about his manifest presence. Mm. And when you read it through the Bible, the first time you actually come across this, you know, God's manifest presence is in the Garden of Eden. And, and it's, a, it's obviously a beautiful picture. Mm. It's a place where Adam and Eve lived. And, and I think they were made for the glory of God, actually. Yeah. They were made for the presence of God. It's interesting when you read in chapter one of Genesis, for the first three days of creation, God creates everything. Um, he like he forms stuff. And then day four, five and six, he fills it. Mm. And what is showing obviously is that, is that the environment that's already been prepared is what like the fish and the, yeah. and the birds and everything need to live in. Mm -hmm. But when you get to Genesis chapter two, we, we've already got the Garden of Eden and then God puts man in the garden. Mm. And once again, it's to show that actually mankind was made for God's glory. Yeah. It's like it doesn't function well yeah. outside of it. Yeah. So yeah, it's a great picture. It's a great picture. And so that idea of mankind was made for God's glory. Yeah. Um, do you want to unpack then how that kind of looks like today? Obviously yeah. what we're talking about there is, is, is creation. It's how God originally intended things. Yeah. Here we are today. Uh, yes. What does that look like still as people who are made for God's glory? Yeah. Well, what's really cool about the story in Genesis is that when God put Adam and Eve in the garden, they lived in a place of absolute bliss, uh, of God's glory and God's presence, mm. but they were also created in God's image. Yeah. And so they reflected God's glory. They reflected God's character. And, and what's really cool about the story is that, uh, and this is an interesting thought actually, that creation was finished, right? We know about that because God rested on the seventh day. Yeah. So, but although creation was finished, Eden wasn't. Mm. And God's original vision and purpose was to actually extend Eden right across the globe. Yeah. And as Adam and Eve were told to be fruitful and multiply and fill up the earth with life, what you would have, and it's a it's an awesome picture, really. You'd have like Eden now extending. Yeah, yeah. And what you'd end up having is you'd have lots and lots and lots and lots of little image bearers yeah. uh, scattered all across the world and extending the presence and the glory of God right across the globe. Yeah. And, and I actually think that that purpose and that vision is still the same today as it was then. Yeah. It's like it hasn't changed one bit. Great, yeah one bit that's it and so that's actually quite exciting is that idea yeah. that the glory of god which in previous weeks we talked about it being in us and upon us as well yeah. there's like a, a mandate for us to actually yes. carry that that yeah. expression of god yeah. uh, into the world uh, and also that that, that that you said that that image of god yeah. we actually as believers are called to keep on demonstrating that's and right. showing and replicating that image yes. of god we're glory carriers, we're which glory is carriers. exactly what you, we want to be talking about uh, right. tonight as well, yeah. which is, is, a, is a pretty exciting thing it's, to do, right? It is awesome <laughs> to think about that we have the responsibility and the privilege of carrying God's glory yeah. and presence into yeah. the world and reflecting him. Yeah. Is, is an awesome project yeah. and it's, uh, it, you know, it's, really, it's really great. Now, what was really helpful is, is you've kind of broken down what that looks like to actually yeah. carry God's, God's glory and, yeah. and his presence. Because uh -huh. when you say something to someone like, hey, can you please go and carry God's glory? Yeah, like, yeah, where, do you, where do you start? Yeah. Like, that's a big thing to do. Yeah. Uh, so I know you've got three things that you want to share with us today, yeah. just about how we can actually be glory carriers. Yes, awesome, Sam. Well, first of all, let's um, paint that picture again that Adam and Eve were in the presence of God in, in Eden, in the glory of God. Yeah. Um, and so they, were, they lived in, in the, manifestation, the manifestation of God's presence. And what we do then is that when we get our Eden experience, we do exactly the same thing as Adam and Eve did. We get, we get our Eden experience, but then we start to extend the glory yeah. and the presence of God. And I think very practically that can be done in three ways. Number one is through worship. So Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 that as we contemplate on the Lord or, or as we contemplate on the, the glory of the Lord, and that means really to think upon, like to meditate upon, to really focus on. Yeah. When we do that, Paul tells us that we then become transformed into that very same image. Yeah, right. So we start to become 
like glory carriers yeah. by by reflecting him mm. through through worship because we're coming more aware of of, of who god is right as we're Absolutely. exalting him as we're lifting him up we're yeah. kind of almost agreeing with our spirits like yeah. this is who god is yeah. he's a glorious god Absolutely. and we're, we're letting that kind of sink in uh, yeah. in our lives right well there's something really powerful about sight and it actually says in the bible that we become like the gods we worship mm. so what you tend to focus on ends up becoming reproduced in you yeah yeah so if you focus in on the character of God and the power of God and the presence of God or the goodness of God, like Pastor Martin yeah. talking about, um, that starts to become, re that gets reproduced in you mm -hmm. and you become a glory carrier just yeah. basically through worship and contemplating on who he is. Amazing. Yeah, I it's love pretty, that. It's, it's pretty awesome. It's and it's a awesome. great way to start as well. And it's something that, you know, it's not just for church. It's, right. it's for when you're at home, when you're doing whatever you are, there are moments where you can worship God yeah. and you can just start to take on more of the idea of who he is and yes. the glory that he's, he's revealed yeah. through us, right? Yeah, yeah, which is yeah. Really and you cool. can be driving to work on a yeah. Monday morning and fill your car with worship yeah. and be meditating on the Lord. And I think something starts to build in your life. Yeah. Like an atmosphere starts to build over you yeah. Uh, and you might not always realize it, you know, but, but people will notice. Yeah, it's exciting, isn't it? People it's will great. notice. <laughs> and so it's then, simple, but it's profound. Exactly. It really, it really is. So we've yeah. got the, uh, we can worship God. Yeah. Uh, and then we can also kind of walk or practice the presence of yeah. God, right? Yeah, that's the second point yeah. is that it's just simply being in his presence. Mm. And there's a, a great verse in 1 John chapter 3, where John says that when Jesus appears, like when Jesus comes back, we shall be like him for we will see him as he is. So apparently once again, connected with this idea of vision, when we see Jesus, we get transformed into his image. Yeah. But it's also about being in his presence and being in his presence once again, just transforms you, yeah. you know? And, and the way I think about this is it's very simply what Brother Lawrence used to call practicing the presence of mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. And practicing the presence of God is once again, very simple, but very profound, yeah. but it's a good reminder for each and every single one of us because a lot of us are too busy in our lives and we don't take the time mm. to actually practice the presence. What Brother Lawrence talks about is, is, you know, is, is taking a moment, stop in your day and acknowledge that God is with you. Yeah. Like he's right there, yeah. he's with you. In fact, Joyce Meyer, I think hits the nail on the head when she says, actually as believers, um, God is closer to us than the air that we, that we breathe because mm. he lives in us. Yeah. So it's just taking that moment to stop and you acknowledge. Once again, there's contemplation going on. You acknowledge that Jesus is with you. And then you start to talk to him. Yeah. You talk to him, you talk to him about what's going on in your life. You talk to him about your struggles, your hopes, your dreams, your mistakes, your failures, and you don't let anything come between you. That's what tends to happen often with Christians. We've got mm -hmm. this, this, this barrier that's yeah. in, in our head really we got this barrier where we, we do the Adam thing and we hide in the trees because yeah, we feel yeah. like we got guilt and shame going on. Mm. God wants to remove all of that. You know, there, there's no need for guilt and shame. Jesus has dealt with all that. Yeah. He wants us to come into his presence, be with him, dwell yeah. with him, spend time with him, talk to him. And I believe that as we do that, something of God's presence manifests in our life. Yeah. I think God loves it when we know that we're not perfect but we don't let our imperfections mm. stop us coming into his presence because yeah. that's faith. Yeah. And we acknowledge his grace yeah, and he good. loves it. And I, I think as well, this kind of helps to lead us onto that, that final point that you've got about putting on, putting on a new self, right? Or yes. putting on a new, yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you want to explain that a little yeah. bit? Yeah. And I think that's another really um, interesting point, actually. The, one of the things that we do when we demonstrate God's glory is to demonstrate his character. Mm. Uh, remember, Pastor Mark said that God's glory is, you know, his presence, his power and his goodness. And reading through the Bible, you can always tell that, you know, that his glory is connected with his character. Yeah. Um, and so when we display God's goodness, we are, we are displaying God's glory. Mm. Now, I think the way that we do this is not as hard as what it may sound at first, actually. In Colossians chapter three, Paul tells us in verse four, when Christ appears, who is your life, mm. then we shall appear with him in glory. And that's obviously a future statement, but I kind of love how the Bible does this. It, it kind of like, mess, God messes with your head sometimes a bit because it's not just a not yet thing, it's also something you can have now. Yeah. And it just depends on how much do you want it? You know, <laughs> how much do you want now yeah. kind of thing? And. And really, what I would say is that 
in very practical terms, there's a, there, there's a difference between Christianity being a changed life and an exchange life. Yeah. Christianity is not just a changed life, yeah. it's an exchange life. Yeah. A changed life could be something like, you know, I had an addiction going on in my life or I had an issue going on in my life. God touched my life and set me free from yeah. it. That's a changed life. Mm -hmm. An exchange life is, as Paul says, Christ who is your life. It's Jesus living his life through us. Yeah. And the way that this works in very practical terms is like this. I'm suppo I suppose you, like me, Sam, you've run out of patience sometimes. Maybe you've <laughs> run out of love so, yeah, towards yeah. a person or whatever. <laughs> and then what you do is that you ask, you say to God, God, I've run out of patience. Could you be patient through me? Mm. Or I've run out of love right now, Lord. Could you love this person yeah. through me? And I believe that a lot of Christians are not asking that question. Yeah. They're trying to do it by themselves. And you just can't. What we need is the supernatural power of God yeah. flowing through us. And it's just an ask away. You say, Jesus, I, I can't do this, but will you do it through me? That's good, yeah. Paul says, when Christ appears, who is your life? Mm. So he, he's in us and he wants to live through us. Yeah. And then when we do that, we are literally demonstrating the character of God right. and therefore the glory yes. of God. Yeah. So in summary, worship, being in God's presence and putting on the new you. Yeah really is a demonstration of the glory of God, I think, in practical terms. Awesome stuff. I love that. And so uh, hopefully that has given you lots to talk about tonight. Uh, isn't it exciting that we are all image bearers of God and all of his glory? You're literally sitting next to an image bearer on your left and your right tonight. And uh, I hope that as, you, as we've been talking tonight, you've got that idea of there is an awareness that we can have of the glory of God, but there's also like that awareness that can then be transformed onto us as well as God's image bearers, as people who display his glory. Uh, and let's think about how amazing that can be in the different places and spaces that we occupy as we are people who display God's glory, how significant that can be. Thanks so much for joining us for these last few weeks. We hope you've really enjoyed uh, our conversations. Uh, have a great night tonight and we'll see you soon.